Do you want to improvise jazz, but you're not sure what to practice? Well, unfortunately, many students are not given clear instructions on what to practice, and so they oftentimes feel stuck in their playing. Well, in today's lesson, I'm going to show you three essential jazz exercises that you should be practicing every day. And I promise that if you go through these exercises, you will see massive improvement in your jazz playing. For each of these exercises, there's a beginner, intermediate, and advanced version. So it doesn't matter your playing level, there are three exercises in this lesson for your level. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, in exercise one, you're gonna master the most important scale that you should know if you wanna play jazz. It's called the diatonic scale. And before I show you the exercises, I wanna actually play this scale so you can see what it sounds like on some jazz standards, and then I'll teach you the exercises. Here it is on Fly Me to the Moon. Here it is on Autumn Leaves. Here it is on the way you look tonight. Now, believe it or not, on all three of these tunes, I was using one simple scale called the diatonic scale. And the diatonic scale is simply a major scale, like the C major scale, which is all white notes. Now, you might be thinking, Johnny, really, my major scales, I can play my major scales. But if you don't learn your major scales in a very specific way, which I'm gonna talk about in just a minute, you're not really gonna understand how to use major scales in jazz. So I'm gonna walk you through this exercise. I'm gonna start with the beginner version, then intermediate, and then advanced. Okay, so if you're a beginner jazz pianist, how do you practice your diatonic scale or major scale so that you can successfully improvise jazz piano? Well, first of all, you need to know your major scale in all 12 keys, but I do not recommend that you practice your major scales by playing a scale up the piano and then doing it in the key of D flat like so many students practice them. Instead, what you wanna practice is called scale shifting. And this is when you transition from one major scale to another major scale very smoothly. And this is a hallmark of jazz playing. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna briefly solo on all the things you are, and I'm gonna show you what it sounds like to smoothly transition between two major scales, A flat major and C major. How was I able to do that? Well, it's through practicing the exercise that I'm about to show you. But before we do that, if you're enjoying this lesson, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. What you wanna practice is called the scale shifting exercise. And with this exercise, you end up practicing all 12 of your major scales, but more importantly, you practice transitioning between the scales so that you can get some really nice smooth lines. So here's how it works. It's actually really simple. We're gonna play the C major scale up the piano. We're gonna use the standard fingering for C. Okay, so thumb under. And when you get to the high note C, we're gonna use our thumb, and guess what we're gonna do here? We're gonna transition to the D flat major scale, coming down, but we're starting on our two finger. So we have, you see that? So what I did is I'm playing my D flat major scale, I'm starting on the two finger, crossing finger four, and playing the standard fingering on D flat, okay? And once again, it's not just about practicing your major scales, it's about transitioning between them smoothly. See what's happening? And so this is kind of the first step of building jazz lines. You have to be able to switch between scales in a smooth manner. Okay, so we left off on the D flat. Let's go to D major. That's gonna be the thumb. We're gonna play this up. Standard fingering. And then when we get to the D, guess what we're gonna do on the E flat? We're gonna use that third finger and we come down on E flat, okay? You see what's happening? So we're very quickly shifting between scales. Okay, so once you land on E flat, by the way, you can use the two or the third finger there. Then we go to E, that's gonna be the thumb standard fingering. We're gonna use thumb there. And then on the F, we're gonna go two. Let's go two, one, four, three, two, one, okay? And then G flat, two finger, standard fingering. 
And then for the G, we're gonna use that third finger. And we're gonna go three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two. And then A flat, third finger. And then we're gonna go thumb, standard fingering, thumb. And then on the A, we're gonna use the four finger. See what's happening? And then four finger on the D. And then finally, B flat, second finger. We're gonna come up, thumb, third finger. And then for the B, we're gonna use the pinky. It's gonna be there, and we're gonna take the scale down. This is the B flat major scale and end on the B. So what you just did is you practiced all 12 of your major scales, but you practiced that smooth transition between the scales. So if you speed it up just a little bit, check out what it now sounds like. Now a quick note, you can swing your eighth notes like the way I'm playing it. One and two and three and four and. Or you can play them straight. One and two and three and four and. It depends on the style that you want to play. So if you're playing pop, rock, contemporary, or Latin, you'll typically play your eighth notes straight. But if you're playing jazz or blues, you'll typically play them swung. Now the goal tempo for this will be 100 if you're more on the beginner side, and it will be 150 if you're more on the intermediate side. Now this lesson comes with two backing tracks for this exercise, one at the beginner speed, one at the intermediate speed. So let's go ahead and play this at the beginner speed, and then I'm gonna teach you the intermediate to advanced level exercise. Here we go. D flat. E, F, G flat, G, A flat, A, B flat, B. By the way, this lesson comes with 12 downloadable backing tracks at different tempos. You can also download the lesson sheet music you're seeing on the top left of your screen. And you can change the key of this entire lesson with the click of one button with our smart sheet music. So I'll put a link to all of that below. Now you may have noticed that the fingering of these scales is not traditional. Meaning if you took classical piano lessons, this is probably not the fingering that you learned for each of these major scales. So why are we using this non-traditional fingering? Well, whenever you're improvising at the piano, you wanna be able to change the fingering on the scales that you're playing depending on whatever type of passage that you're improvising. Meaning that you do not wanna get locked into one way of fingering the major scale. So something that I would encourage you to do is to actually come up with your own fingering for this exercise that you just learned. By the way, if you want to learn all 12 of your major scales, you want to learn all of your diatonic chords, common chord progressions, how to play lead sheets with these chords, accompany with them, you can in our beginner foundations learning tracks. I'll put a link to those below. All right, if you're more on the intermediate to advanced level, you need to know all 12 of your major scales to play jazz, but again, I do not recommend that you just play your major scales up and down the piano. Instead, the best way to practice your major scales is to practice them as modes. And the modes are basically when you take the major scale and you start on a different note from that scale. So if you play a C major scale starting on C, we call that Ionian. If you play the C major scale starting on D, we call that Dorian. This is called E Phrygian, F Lydian, G Mixolydian, A Aeolian, and B Locrian. And there are many ways to practice your modes, but one of the best exercises is this one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna play the C major scale up the piano. We're gonna bring it down and we're gonna do a little skip up to the E and this sets us up for D Dorian. You see what we're doing? So it's the C major scale, same fingering, except now we're starting on the D. Now from here we use the transition note F and this takes us to E Phrygian. See what we're doing? There's the skip to F. Same fingering as the C major scale. G Mixolydian. 
same pattern. There's the skip. Now to A Aeolian. B Locrian. And C. So the goal is to get this to a faster tempo. If you're more on the intermediate side, I recommend 150 BPM. And if you're more on the advanced side, I recommend 200 BPM. So let's go ahead and play this with the advanced backing track at 200 BPM so you can hear what it sounds like. And here it is. Here we go. Once you're able to play at the goal tempo, then I recommend that you do this exact same exercise in the key of D flat major. So same thing. E flat minor, F minor, and so on. By the way, if you want to learn how to solo with each of your modes, you can learn in our soloing fundamentals learning track. I'll put a link to that below. Exercise number two is to master your diatonic chords. And diatonic chords are simply the chords that come from a key. So if you're playing jazz tunes like Fly Me to the Moon, guess what? All of these chords come from the key of C major or Autumn Leaves. All of these chords come from the key of G major. So you need to practice playing all of your diatonic chords in all 12 keys to truly master jazz piano. So first I'm gonna show you a beginner to intermediate level exercise, then an intermediate to advanced level exercise. So if you're more on the beginner to intermediate side, I recommend that you play your diatonic triads in a major key. And basically these are all of the three note chords that come from the major scale. So we have C major, we have D minor, we have E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B diminished, okay? They're all of the three note chords that come from the major scale. So a very simple exercise is to take each of these chords and break them up using a simple pattern. Okay, doesn't that sound nice? And it's actually really simple. I'm basically taking each chord, starting on the middle note, going middle, bottom, middle, top. And then on the next chord, D minor, I start on the middle note, but I use my four finger, okay? So middle, bottom, middle, use the third finger, top, and then E minor, middle, bottom, middle, top, and then F major, middle, again, we're using the four finger, the ring finger, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, and then you end on the C. Now, if you're more on the beginner side, I recommend a target tempo of 100 BPM. And if you're more on the intermediate side, I recommend a target tempo of 150. Now we have two backing tracks, a beginner and an intermediate one. So let's go ahead and play this with the intermediate backing track. And here it is. Here we go. Now once you can play at your target tempo, then I recommend that you transition to the next key. So you can play the same exercise in D flat major. You need to know your diatonic chords. These are all of the three note chords that come from the D flat major scale. And then you can apply that little right hand pattern. Now, if you're more on the intermediate to advanced side, it's very important to learn all of your diatonic seventh chords in all 12 keys. And the difference between what I just taught you and the diatonic seventh chords is that you're gonna add a seventh to each of the chords. So the first chord, C major seven, we're adding another third on top of the C triad. And then we do the same thing on the D minor. So D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven. Okay, G7, A minor 7, and B half diminished 7. These are the most important chords that you need to know if you want to play jazz piano. All right, so here's the intermediate advanced exercise. Basically, you're going to take these diatonic 7th chords and you're going to do this sweet little pattern on them.
okay? It sounds super cool and jazzy, and I love this rhythm because it's so commonly used in jazz lines. So we're gonna take our C major seven chord, we're gonna arpeggiate it up, and then take D minor down. It's that simple. E minor, arpeggiate it up, F major down, G up, A minor down, and B half diminished up, and C major down. Now, if you're more on the intermediate side, a good target tempo is 130 BPM. And if you're a little more on the advanced side, a good target tempo is 180 BPM. So we're gonna play this exercise with the intermediate backing track at 130 BPM. Here we go. Now, once you've hit your target tempo, I do recommend that you practice this in the other 11 keys. So you could go to D flat major and practice all of your diatonic seventh chords that come from this key, and then you can apply this fun little pattern. By the way, if you wanna learn all of your diatonic seventh chords in all 12 keys, plus a bunch of amazing exercises to help you master them, check out our diatonic seventh chord exercises course. I'll put a link to that below. All right, exercise number three is probably one of the most important exercises that you should learn if you want to solo on a jazz standard. And I'm gonna actually go ahead and play a little solo to show you how this exercise will help you become a better soloist. When I was just soloing, 99% of the notes that I played came from one scale, the major scale. But how was I able to create so many interesting lines using just one scale? Well, this exercise is what helped me to do it, and it's called the scale pattern exercise. I'm gonna show you an exercise for beginner to intermediate level players, and then intermediate to advanced level players. All right, if you're more on the beginner to intermediate level, what you wanna practice with this exercise is playing every interval using the major scale. And here's what I mean. If you only have seven notes to choose from, you really need to be creative with the types of intervals that you play. Right? Notice when I'm playing little lines, I'm being very creative with the intervals, meaning the distance between all of the notes. And so the way to practice intervals is to do this scale pattern exercise. And the way it works is we're gonna first do our second interval, which is this, and we're gonna practice this up the C major scale. Okay, it's actually really simple. So we go C, D, D, E, E, F, F, G, G, A, A, B, B, C. Okay, that's it. Once you've done that, then you're gonna play your third intervals. So we play like this, C, E, D, F, E, G. See what we're doing? All the way up the piano, okay? And it's really helpful to swing it, okay? It gives it a nice sound, okay? Once you've done thirds, then you're gonna do fourth intervals, and then fifth intervals, and then sixth intervals, okay? And then finally, once you finish sixth, then you wanna do your seventh intervals. And again, I'm swinging it to give it kind of a lilting sound. Now, if you're on the beginner side, you wanna get this to 100 BPM, and if you're more on the intermediate side, you wanna get this to 150 BPM. So let's go ahead and play this with the intermediate backing track at 150 BPM. Let's start with seconds. Thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths. Now, if you're on the intermediate to advanced side, you wanna practice your intervals, but instead of playing each interval, 
by itself, you wanna mix your intervals because this is what pro jazz improvisers will do. They'll mix their various intervals to create some very interesting sounding lines. So there are three ways to do this. What I recommend first is to play a combination of fourth and second intervals. So we're gonna start on our C major seven and we're gonna play a fourth interval, C, F, and then a second interval from the D. So D, E, that's our pattern. Then we're gonna repeat the same pattern, except this time we're gonna do it on the D minor seven. So up a fourth, and then we're gonna do a second starting from the E. You see that? And then up to the E. Up a fourth, we're gonna go down a third, and then up a second. Does that make sense? You seeing the pattern? G, A, B, and then you can end on your C. All right, next you wanna mix your fifth interval with your third interval. So for this exercise, we're gonna start on the C, go up a fifth, and then we're gonna do a third from the D, so D to F. And then we're gonna repeat this pattern on the D. So up a fifth, and then a third from the E. And then on the E, we're gonna do a fifth, and then a third from the F, and then the same thing on the F, and then G, A, and then B, and then we can end on the C. All right, we've covered all of our intervals except a seventh and a sixth interval. So for the final exercise, we're gonna play a seventh interval from the C, and then we're gonna play a sixth interval from the C. Make sense? And then same thing on D. Seventh, six, seven, six, seventh, six, seventh, six, seventh, six, seven, six, and then we end on C. Now intermediate players, your goal tempo is 150 BPM. Advanced players, your goal tempo is 200 BPM. So let's go ahead and play this with the intermediate backing track at 150 BPM, and here it is. Here we go. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the lesson, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have over 1,000 step-by-step lessons for all playing levels where you'll learn your favorite songs, styles, and how to improvise at the piano. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.